when I first saw Mega Man, it was the first or second weekend of the first grade. I saw my cousin playing it, and I asked him, who's that? He said, that's Mega Man. And it was the fire stage Mega Man X5. I never looked back since Mega Man X was a big deal for me. And I'm going to review the first game up until X8. Simple as that. Mega Man X1 is a game that in its first few minutes already left a big impact. It wanted you to know that it was a big deal the way it told its story. I think out of all the Mega Man games, this is the one that did its best to tell you a story. And it's also one I had a knowing time with in terms of the first few levels. They don't give you the slide feature. You get it as an upgrade. Where after later installments, the slide is basically treated as a human right. Mega Man X should be able to slide. He doesn't need an upgrade for that. And without it, it, he just seems crippled. He just seems slow. But at least they didn't make wall jumping a human right for you. Because wall jumping is a platforming feature that I can't get enough of. And this game kind of gave me that feature. And I've been trying to do it since. You know how a lot of kids my growing up around my generation, they have the Kamehameha? I had the double jump, and I wanted to, like, kick walls, um, repeatedly to, like, get higher. That's what I did. And I did the Kamehameha on Spirit Ball. Who gives a shit? Spirit Bomb. Damn Budokai Tenkaichi 3 for making that mistake. <laughs> Forgive me. Don't forgive me, because I'm not apologizing for that bullshit. <laughs> I mean... Vile was an interesting bad guy. You had the sacrifice of Zero. And... Sigma was an excellent boss battle. A lot of this. The soundtrack for all these games... Mega Man X is the place for soundtracks. Now, Mega Man X2, this was my favorite of the Super Nintendo collection. I mean, all the bad guys, all the stages are awesome. The fact that you had to actually, like, get three optional boss battles so that you wouldn't have to fight Zero, that was cool. Or you could ignore defeating all three of those guys, and they are pretty difficult but not impossible, I've done it. And you can fight Zero, who's also really difficult to beat. Now, the return of Sigma, you had an interesting storyline. You see, you saw X Mature as a character from X1, and the upgrades were awesome. I mean, you had an Air Dash, you had an upgrade to the charge shot, and you can apply the upgrade to the weapons you obtain. This is all taking it to another dimension, and that's why it's one of my favorite games of the series. Mega Man X3, however, I didn't like because on the anniversary collection, you got the PlayStation 1 version of the anime cutscenes that haven't aged well. And the soundtrack didn't sound right when it was remastered. I love the charm of the 16-bit versions. Not so much when there was a real instrument vibe. Whatever the hell they did, it wasn't right. It didn't sound right. I 
And in general, I just didn't like the soundtrack. Some of the armor upgrades, if I could get them, I didn't like any of them. The secrets were, I couldn't find one secret. I couldn't find any of the Wily tanks. There was something I wasn't doing right, yet I still beat the game through. And I found everything else. I was able to cheat my way to the top and play it fairly as well. Didn't care about the storyline, didn't care about all that jazz. Mega Man 4, however, I love the anime cutscenes, I love the story it told, I love the characters, I loved the regular armor upgrades for X and the ultimate armor upgrades. I love the palette swap for Zero. I love the fact that you could play as both characters for their individual storylines with the sort of tragic love relationship with Zero and I think that Isis chick? Iris. And the confrontation between Zero and her bro, Colonel. That was cool. And with X, his beef with Colonel was more philosophical. And you also had to deal with the fact that he was abandoned by his friend, Douglas, who was... I think his name was Douglas or something. He was a spy, and... Anything between X and Sigma is interesting. Sigma here is various forms. This is the hardest Sigma I ever fought. I mean, he starts off as a hooded guy, and I couldn't get hit with him. And then he has a second form, which was annoying but not impossible. That third form fucked me up. All in all, this game was the shit for me. Mega Man X5. That was... That was just plain awesome. Because of X5, I truly love the soundtrack there. One thing I don't like is on the storyline, there is a time limit that you could disregard for Earth blowing up. And that kind of made exploration a little bit more pressurized and took out the freedom you normally get in these Mega Man and Mega Man X games. But you could basically disregard it, have Planet Earth be damaged. This is a game with multiple endings, multiple directions. And you could really choose which character you want to play as Mega Man depending on what armor you want, or a zero, depending on what armor you want. And... There wasn't this thing where, in the intro stage, if you're going to pick zero instead of Mega Man, you're going to be stuck with zero for the rest of the game. There is wiggle room in character choices. This is... A game with like awesome stages. I love a lot of the stages here, especially one of the first ones that fair. That was really cool. Dynamo was awesome, and the final form of Sigma was probably the most disturbing thing I ever saw. I mean. That big ass dome and his sinister expression. Sigma really is kind of a creepy character in what he stands for philosophically. And really, in some of the questions the Mega Man series seems to reflect on, stuff that we don't really think about because a lot of our memes are. a little off the deep end. We're talking about how the negative consequences of giving things autonomy and free will. And the fact that there are negative consequences to it. But 
one thing I don't like about X is that his character can be a little bit too preachy, too whiny, and too utopian. And you can see the negative ramifications in the Zero X series and the Mega Man ZX series. How it ends up becoming egalitarian and faggy. I'm gonna check the door. I hate when people run past the door or, like, put their hand on the door and it makes it sound like it's getting knocked. Because, really, shit is weak like that in this apartment. It's all just scrap doors. Not much can be done about that. Ugh. Mega Man X6, the whole idea that Zero is dead, again, and it's weird because they bring back, you can bring back Zero in like five minutes, and it's totally anticlimactic, the fake out bad guys you get, they did the same bullshit that they usually do in Mega Man the latter trilogy, like Mega Man 4, 5, and 6. But this is X, man? Why? And the bad guy here is actually more interesting than Sigma. And he's more difficult to face. This is the only Mega Man X game I play that I couldn't beat through. And it also has my favorite soundtrack, my favorite features, some of the coolest armor. And... It's a 10 out of 10. Some of the boss levels, like, you know, final levels, are unmercilessly difficult and even impossible if you have the wrong armor. But, I just don't like some aspects of the level designing. That's kind of why I couldn't beat the game. And my dad had the same problem, too, while he was playing it, years before I picked it up. But I had my favorite soundtrack, had my favorite art style, that's that. Mega Man 7, didn't play. It went with a 3D style, didn't work, didn't look good, the voice acting sucked, and it wasn't fun to play or watch. End of story. Mega Man X8, it went back to its roots, it dabbled in 3D here and down with, with the design, but you knew that there were either two paths to go to, so it wasn't a complete abandonment. They don't give you a fake out bad guy at the last minute, That's I, and then go for the real bad guy, the cliche bad guy of... Sigma. Sigma is the fake out bad guy, and you find out if you play the harder difficulty settings. If you go on beginner, then it's not that. And that was pretty brilliant. The controls, the fact that Z Mega Man X starts off with the jump dash feature. Lots of love about this game. Three characters, various armor upgrades, and how they handle the armor upgrades. It's not perfect. It certainly feels smaller of a game. And it didn't really add as much dimension as it should have. Visually, it just looks like a 3D PlayStation game with better, slightly better resolution. It visually, it wasn't the most pretty PS2 game, but whatever. Those are my thoughts. Hope you enjoyed it.